Devil Wears Prada. Now, The Devil All the Time is a Netflix original movie starring Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson, Bill Skarsgård, Jason Clark, and Riley Koo. I think that's how you spell their last name or say it. And, and a chubby uh, Sebastian Stan. This is a dark and disturbing drama set in the backdrop of West Virginia from 19, the late 1940s to the mid-1960s, I believe. It's a multi-story arc, uh, with the first one starting with Bill Skarsgård. His character's name is Willard Russell, Tom Holland's younger father. He is a veteran that just come home from the war. There is a gruesome flashback that pretty much starts the tone of the film. Then it jumps back with Willard meeting a special someone. Years pass, and Willard's son, Arvin Russell, comes home from school with a run-in with a few bullies. Christianity plays a part throughout this film. Willard takes Arvin out several times to pray to two pieces of barn wood nailed together to look like a cross. Arvin, Arvin doesn't seem to have much interest in praying, uh, much less God. Later, Willard has a run-in with some passerbys commenting about his beautiful wife, the, played by um, Haley Bennett. He brings Arvin along to show him it's all right to stick up for what you believe in. And boy, does he go to go to town on these guys. It seemed Arvin up to this point hasn't had any luck uh, getting close with his father, but realizes this is a bonding moment. And after the beating, they go out for a candy bar. Afterwards, tragedy strikes the family that led to decisions that caused more tragedy. Uh, Arvin then is moved to Mead, a West Virginia woods town, with his father's close relatives, who also ran into some of their own tragedy in the past, and now they've adopted Arvin and Lenora. When Arvin and Lenora, Lenora first meet, they are introduced as step-siblings. Uh, I imagine this expressed because they were actually cousins, and back then in small hick towns, it might have been acceptable for distant cousins to get a bit close. Set. A few years go by, and Arvin has turned into the handsome Tom Holland. Uh, he and Lenora are teenagers, fairly close. Lenora is bullied, uh, and later Arvin takes what his father taught him years before and brutally teaches them not to mess with her again. And of course, they comply. Given that this is a Christian community, a new preacher comes to town taking over the local church played by Robert Pattinson. Um, I haven't seen much of his work past Twilight. If he's got a creepy, squealy voice in, in reality, uh, he'd be an interesting Batman, that's for sure. At some time in the middle of the film, it cuts to a few scenes with Jason Clark and Riley Coe as a type of Bonnie and Clyde version. Clark's character, Carl, takes road trips with his wife and generously picks up hitchhikers and photographs them. Uh, then evil ensues. Back to Tom Holland's arc. His stepsister has a close connection with the preacher. After some seduction, Lenore is put in a tough spot. She goes to the preacher uh, for help, who evidently uh, turns her away. Um, something happens... A little after that as well. But later on, after learning about Lenora's involvement with the preacher, Arvin confronts the preacher in a pretty intense scene that resolves in tragedy. Arvin takes off after the run-in with the preacher and hitchhikes across town and finds Jason and Riley's character offering him a ride. An incident happens there. At the end, Arvin confronts his past, visiting his hometown. Someone he ran into years prior follows him, and the climax ensues. For the most part, I enjoyed this movie. I, I liked it. The performances, I, you know, I thought they were all pretty good. I think the, the biggest thing here is um, it could have been a little bit longer. It was two hours and 18 minutes. I think, uh, you know, to develop a lot of the characters properly could have been an extra 25 minutes maybe half an hour to fill out character development and sometimes you need that and i think this movie 
even though it was pretty good and performances were great the openings of every character and the closings of every character were actually pretty good but in, in between it was kind of like well i would have liked to see more of what why this person is the way they are why that person is the way they are I, the one thing I did notice uh, in the beginning, the first five minutes of the movie, was when uh, Skarsgård and Bennett meet up at a diner. They both go out for uh, smoke. They're, you know, conversing back and forth. And I noticed when Haley Bennett's character steps off the wall, she's got paint along her, uh, her along her arm. I don't know if the uh, the filmmakers didn't catch that, if it was part of the movie. But the characters didn't acknowledge it, and the, the, the camera angle also didn't acknowledge it. So I, I think that was a, you know, a bit of a flaw there, a bit of a mess up. About a, a good half a dozen scenes there where it, it's pretty uneasy to watch. There is a lot of messed up things to have that happen with these people, these characters. It, some of it might turn your stomach. It, it didn't quite turn mine, but it was just kind of like, oh my god, like it was like the shock value of it really, just like, whoa, you know, this movie is not for kids in any means. Um, I wouldn't even, I don't think I'd even watch it with my twelve-year-old kid. It's the the subject matter is pretty intense. You can definitely tell that this was a passion project for the filmmakers. I would have given, I think I would give it out of five stars i'd probably give it about you know three and a half maybe four all right thank you very much